It's finally here. Sonic X Shadow Generations. Maybe one of, if not, the most hyped Sonic game to date. But now the question is, does it live up to the hype? Well, I think it speaks for itself. Shadow Generations adds so many improvements onto the already amazing Generations title, not to mention how badass it is. Everything from the animations, story, stages, and especially the gameplay is utterly insane. Sega had a vision of what this game could be, and they exceeded it. Now, let's not waste any more time. You all want to hear about the gameplay. Fair warning though. This video will not be spoiler free and will cover everything this new game has to offer. In the gameplay trailers, we saw Shadow use some weird alien abilities. But the main aspect I was focused on during those trailers is the fact that he finally teleports instead of using the homing attack. And it's an actual teleport too. You can travel through lasers and just appear in places you really shouldn't be. It's an amazing feeling that adds a whole new way to take on a stage. And in my opinion, this game might be the fastest feeling in the franchise. Sega was very generous when it came to enemy placement, making it very easy for Shadow to just blink around and achieve a ton of skips. Thankfully, the stages are all around 4 to 5 minutes each, so you won't tear through them too fast. This game feels like a perfect blend of Generations and Frontiers, two of my personal favorites. In classic generations, you had a 2D hub world to complete and solve. But Shadow has a completely 3D world with a ton of different puzzles and collectibles to find. It's a lot like Frontiers, it feels like an open zone world. And in Frontiers, I really enjoy climbing all the towers to get to the boss fight, so I'm more than happy to see that return. The hub world also features a ton of places you can't reach until the end game, so if you ever get stuck trying to reach a certain collectible, that's probably why. This world is also just the best place to practice and toy around with all of Shadow's new demon abilities, such as his demon spears. If you watched my video going over Shadow's original game from 2005, or if you've played it yourself, you'll remember the Chaos Spear from the final boss fight with Devil Doom. That's pretty much what the Doom Spear is, except it's not Chaos Energy, it's demonic. The only notable difference between the two is when charged, instead of becoming a more powerful blast, it locks on to up to five different targets. Doom Spear isn't used very often, but I think when it is used, it's used well and adds another layer to the gameplay. It ensures that you're paying attention and not just holding down boost. Doom Blast is our next ability, and honestly, I wish it was used more. Doom Blast has Shadow launch an enemy into the air and then kick them as far as possible, destroying anything it hits, and then Shadow blinks to that location as well. I think this is used like less than five times in actual gameplay, which sucks. It feels so powerful and is great for making distance, but it's just underutilized. Our third unlock is Doom Surf, maybe the least exciting of the bunch. This just has Shadow summon a demon manta ray to ride over water, which doesn't make too much sense because I feel like if Sonic can run on water, then Shadow probably can too, but that hasn't happened, so maybe not. Doom Surf is mainly used for challenges and boss fights, and isn't very mobile to be honest. Shadow can spin attack side to side and jump, but that's really about it besides an initial boost when deployed. And it really turns like shit and just kind of overall feels awkward. I'm excited to see how everyone reacts and feels to this next ability, Doom Morph. This allows Shadow to turn into a demon squid and travel through this mud-like demon goop. He can also swing off of the demon orbs and dash attack forward. The idea of Shadow transforming into a full-on demon it's kind of ridiculous, but it's just as fantastic. The swing is a little bit difficult to use in my opinion. I don't know if I'm doing it wrong or if it's just not programmed well. Some areas have you use it to travel straight up and I just can't figure out how the hell that works. Our final ability is probably the one most players were looking forward to. The Doom Wing. Doom Wing is this game's version of the Super Form, only being able to activate when Shadow has 50 rings or more. While active, Shadow can glide, has an improved jump, and can boost in the air to borderline fly. Like I said earlier, all of these are completely insane and unexpected out of a Sonic game, but they all fit into the playstyle so perfectly, adding so many new obstacles or outlets to make this game feel completely new and not just a DLC for Sonic Generations. Now that I really think about it, this game doesn't feel like Generations at all. It may share a ton of elements, but overall Shadow plays and feels like something entirely new. His boost, teleport, and Chaos Control change it up so much. 
Chaos Control is back and it is better than ever. In the 2005 game, you had two different Chaos abilities. Chaos Blast, which was a massive AoE explosion, and Chaos Control, which stopped time like from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Chaos Blast is lost to time as of right now, but Chaos Control returns and feels great. The original would just have everything freeze and Shadow would fly as far as possible until the duration ended. The player had no control and there was no skill behind it. But Sega must have seen something special here, because now when you use it, you have full control and can even time it to walk over missiles, wipe out an entire room, or just save 5 seconds on time. It's beautiful and easily the best addition to the game. The gameplay is only half of the equation though, because the stages are what really matter most here, and sadly there aren't very many. With 6 stages, each with 2 acts per usual, there are 12 total levels for the player to speed through or explore. Just like classic generations, all of these stages are revamps from past games. In order, we have Sonic Adventure 2, Sonic Heroes, Sonic 06, Sonic Forces, Frontiers, which is weird because Shadow wasn't in that game, and we end off with Sonic Adventure 2 again. I'm a little confused why they didn't include anything from the Shadow game, but oh well. All of these stages are fantastic and feel fast and fluent. Every time I replay a stage, I end up finding a whole new path to take. And visually speaking, the stages are phenomenal. The backdrops are detailed and vibrant, the layout is unique and versatile, and the enemies are laid out great. Since there are only 6 stages to look over, there isn't really much to discuss. But at least Sega gave us 20 challenge runs to complete and 4 boss fights. The challenges are all about ability mastery. For example, this one is all about time and chaos control. They're all fairly short, only taking around a minute to a minute and a half, but they're all a very fun, quick challenge. The boss fights are reimagines of past fights. Skip to this timestamp if you don't want to be spoiled. Bio Lizard, Metal Overlord, Mephilus, and Devil Doom. Bio Lizard was my favorite of the four, but they all played great and utilized whichever new ability you acquired as their main component. In total, this game takes around four hours to complete which is short, even for a Sonic game. Sega did offer a hard mode with new challenges and harder versions of each boss to power through, but that'll still maybe only add an extra 30 minutes. That's not to take away from the game though. Everything they added is incredible, but there's just not enough of it. I think a lot of time went into the animations of this game, because wow, this might be their best work yet. Shadow alone is swift, agile, and impactful, and all of it works perfectly with its hero skin as well, except for the fact that his quills don't move, which kind of pisses me off. The enemies move and seem a bit more robotic at times, and they seem a bit more just like something to run through, but at least all the bosses look incredible. There really isn't much to say about the animations though, unless you just want to hear me repeating myself, calling everything gorgeous over and over again. So we're just gonna move on to the story. Since this takes place during the events of Sonic Generations, it's a very similar plot. The main difference here is who Shadow is fighting and what he's fighting for. Generations is all about the timeline being distorted, bringing places and enemies back from the past. And for Shadow, this includes Black Doom, who instantly starts targeting Shadow in the hopes of using him as a weapon once again. After each stage, Shadow becomes more and more demonic but is still holding on to his humanity due to the fact that Maria and Gerald Robotnik are there to keep him sane. Every time Shadow starts to lose his cool, Maria is very quick to say some profound statement calming his nerves. Do you know why I named you Shadow? Because without light, there's only darkness. But a shadow will show you where to find the light. Do you understand? Ain't no way I'm buying a 10 year old girl saying this shit bro. This kind of repeats itself until the end where Shadow finally defeats Doom once again. Once defeated, everything starts turning back to normal and Shadow starts to bargain how to save Maria. Maria turns into a poet once again though and Shadow runs away crying. It's quite a simple story, but a fun one nonetheless. It's the perfect spin-off story for a game like Generations in my opinion. My final thoughts on the game are exactly what you'd expect. Sega killed it. It would be nice if it was a little longer and had some more content, but it does include a full remaster of Generations, with some added collectible chows per stage. I can easily see myself spending so many more hours replaying these stages and trying to find every secret. If you're on the edge about buying this game, let me be the voice to tip the odds. You're getting a great remaster with an even better DLC, and while you're at it, you should also subscribe. Thank you for watching, and be sure to comment your thoughts on the game. Let me speak to the people, Bigelow.
Let me speak. Nobody's stopping you. 30, I'm 30, I'm 30. <laughs> that's what they respond to him with? That, no, that's what Piccolo says that after, <laughs> after he starts telling you about how little of a fan he is of the government. I don't... <laughs> that's not real. It's a fan dub, Connor. Yeah, I know. No, you don't. Let me speak to them. They need to hear this. <laughs> <laughs>